In this example, I'm going to go ahead and work out the exact value for the cosecant of 75 degrees. So remember, if you will, that cosecant is considered a reciprocal function, and its reciprocal counterpart will be sine. So that means that the cosecant of some angle theta will be equivalent to 1 over the sine of that angle theta. So we're going to go ahead and use this relationship to find this exact value for the cosecant of 75 degrees. So we can say the cosecant of 75 degrees equals 1 over the sine of 75 degrees. And this value of sine for 75, let's go ahead and use this sum identity for sine, which says the sine of and we have two angles A and B, and we're adding them together. And it has this expansion. So it's the sine of A, which is that first angle, times the cosine of B, which is the second angle, and then plus this product, sine of B times cosine of A. So we need two angles uh, that are nice to work with. So we're going to take the sine and the cosine of these angles. But also they add up to 75 degrees. So perhaps let's go ahead and use the sine of... Let's use maybe 45 degrees and 30 degrees. So they add up to 75, and also we know the sine and cosine for both 45 and 30 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and figure this out. So we have this 1 over, and then we've got giant fraction bar here. Uh, consequently, this fraction bar is called a vinculum. In mathematics, a vinculum is any horizontal bar used to group digits. It's the fraction bar, and uh, probably also you've seen it before. It's the bar used uh, to signify we have repeating digits. So the bar over the repeating digits is also called a vinculum. Anyway, I digress. So we're going to go ahead and use this expansion formula for the sum identity for sine. And here's our angle A and our angle B. So let's go ahead and put it together. So we have the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees plus the sine of 30 degrees times the cosine of 45 degrees. All right, so at this point, it's just... Uh, Time to go ahead and get all these values. So the sine of 45 will be the square root of 2 over 2. And the cosine of 30 will be the square root of 3 over 2. And we'll add to that product the sine of 30, which is 1 half, and the cosine of 45, which is also the square root of 2 over 2. So 1 over. Let's do these products here. So we have what looks like the square root of 6 over 4. And we're adding to that the square root of 2 over 4. So let's go ahead and put that together. So we have the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. Well, when we have this 1 over business, this fraction is in the denominator. So 1 over, so we're really concerned with taking its reciprocal. So let's go ahead and take this denominator and just uh, flip it over. And that's what we're going to work with. So it's going to turn into 4 over the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. Okay, but we don't really like having these radical terms in the denominator. So let's go ahead and rationalize this denominator. We'll do so by multiplying the top and bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate just means we're going to go ahead and change the sign in the middle and set up a nice difference of squares factorization so we can multiply. So we'll use the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2. And we'll get parentheses around everything here. All righty. So let's go ahead and focus on this denominator first. It's the difference of squares, meaning we only need to multiply the firsts and the lasts because the middles uh, will cancel each other out. And that's by design. So we're going to have the square root of 6 times the square root of 6, which is, well, 6, and the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is 2. And we're going to be subtracting those. So we'll have 4 times, and then we have that quantity right there. So 6 minus 2 is 4. And then these 4s will cancel. So what do we have then? Well, it's the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2. And that's going to equal the cosecant 
of our 75 degrees.